Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial. If you want to learn how to create PS1 looking games like this in Godot 4, this is the tutorial for you. So let's get to it. First of all, I want to walk you through my scene right, right now, really, really quick. So I have like this little map just to show uh, how everything is set up uh, with a couple of rocks here. And as you can see, I already applied the shader. Uh, for PS1 looking uh, like deformations here. And also like I have like this little house and this little enemy follow me, following me around like a stalker enemy kind of thing. So first of all, uh, I'm gonna add this house to my current project. Uh, this is just a house by Elegant Pro. This is Retro House Pack by Elegant Pro one of my, if not my favorite PS1 artists. Uh, I'm working with him in a really cool project uh, that we are going to be releasing probably next year. Be sure to check him out in social media and also on itch.io. Uh, so I'm gonna grab this house and I'm gonna put it in my game here just to illustrate how to achieve this, all right? So first of all, I'm gonna so select all of the uh, models, all of the objects, and I'm gonna go with to export and GLTF2. And I'm gonna find my uh, my folder for my game project, and I'm just gonna go with GLTF plus texture here, just so I have the texture separate separated in case I want to make a, a something, uh, some modifications uh, on the fly. And I'm going to go with house uh, one, right? And I'm going to go to this include tab and selected objects. This is not necessarily in this particular project, but in other projects, you might have a bunch of things uh, in, in the same Blender file. So you want to be sure to select only the selected objects to be imported. If not, you're going to end up with everything in, in one file in Godot. So I'm going to export. And there you go. Now, Hey guys, sorry for interrupting the video. Uh, but quickly, quick announcement. I need to shout out my Patreon here because I'm going full indie right now. So if you want to support me, you can join the Patreon and get exclusive newsletter, exclusive videos, exclusive uh, everything. So in order for me to keep doing these videos and to keep creating indie video games, uh, I need your support here. So, and also another way you can support me is by adding the Knight of the Inquisitor to your Steam wishlist, which is a survivor horror game with fixed camera angles. It's really short. It's going to be one hour, two hour gameplay, depending on how much or on how quickly you can beat it. And also it's released, it's going to be released on December the 12th. So uh, please uh, add this game into your wish list if you're interested. And thank you. Let's get back to the video. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Now, uh, I want to mention that in my texture material thing here in Blender, I have selected the interpolation as closest because this is how the ps1 look like if i put it by default blender will uh select linear and you will see uh the texture a little bit blurry just like the n64 would have but i have it selected as closest because i was working on this and once i export it to the the house to godot godot 4 this is not the case for Godot one, uh, 3, but with Godot 4, it will know that the texture should be uh, all pixelated with no, um, with no filter on it, all right? Okay, so now in the, the house looks pretty PS1 looking with this texture, uh, that has no filter and it's all pixelated, right? But if I move closer to the walls, you can see there's no deformation. If I go to the other things that I already have, you can see how 
when I move closer, there's a little bit of a deformation. And also, like, look at the rock there. It's kind of wobbly, right? It's wobbly when I move. And this thing does not have that. That is because it's using the default material from Blender. And we're going to add a shader to this thing. So it gets wobbly and it's also uh, a little bit, uh, it gets deformated when you move closer to it, just like this wall here, all right? So let's get to it. Okay, so for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna right click the house and make it local, right? And then here, I'm gonna select whatever uh, mesh here because it, it is composed of several meshes, right? Like the doors and the windows. But I think all of this, I think Elegant Pro made it so all the, um, so all the material, all the objects share the same material. So I'm gonna go to surface material override, uh, and I'm gonna override the uh, material that the house already has. So I'm gonna go with shader material, and it's all white now. And I'm, I'm going to right click here and then go with new shader. And I'm going to name it PSX shader. I already have this shader, so but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go and create it from scratch. Uh, so there you go. And then I'm going to click here. And I'm going to go to grab this shader, PS1 PSX model shader by Grof. Uh, it is in godotshaders.com. I'm going to leave this link in the description and I'm going to copy this. And then I'm just going to delete this and paste that code. There you go. And now in shader params, uh, I need the albedo texture. So I'm going to look for it, which is the house one texture. That is why it's also important when you're exporting from Blender to have it separated, the texture and the model so now i can just do this and i have this uh the same thing that we had before right but now i can play around with these values right uh first of all i'm gonna enable affin affine i think i don't know how to pronounce that word mapping and now we have the deformation thing but Maybe it's that's too much for you. I don't know, but I think you can change this value to achieve your uh, what you want. And this is supposed to be the resolution of your game, which is in my case, it is actually 320 by 240. That is the, the uh, PS1 resolution. But also we have this jitter thing, as you can see. This lighter will make it more jittery or less jittery. I think if I go to zero, there's no jitter. So I'm gonna leave it as 0.5 just to illustrate how crazy you can go with these values. So what I wanna do is illustrate how crazy you can go with these values, uh, the jitter and the alpha zizer and all of that. So, and you can also turn off the uh this craziness <laughs> but a lot of puppet combo games have this uh crazy textures when you go crazy deformations when you go up to inspect uh the walls up close and all, and all of that but let's just test how this looks like by the way i removed the um the i removed the a VHS filter that I have on top of this, but as you can see, it can get a little bit crazy with this. And you have to tinker around with the values of the resolution, right? But the cool thing is that now we have Jitter, and we have, oh, there's not a lot of Jitter. Let's just exaggerate so we can see better. There we go. And now it's super exaggerated, the jitter. <laughs> but you can play around with this, uh, with this shader. 
and get to the point where um, this looks good to you, right? And then the last thing is I'm going to turn on the VHS filter, which is just another, um, just another shader that is on top of the screen. And this looks really cool. Look at that. So yeah, if you like this uh, tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have way more free time now. Uh, and I'm going to be uploading more tutorials uh, soon. The reason I didn't upload a lot of tutorials recently is because just my life went crazy with work and stuff like that. But now I think I'm going to have way more free time. Uh, I'm doing full freelance work now, so hopefully uh, that will go well. If you want to support me, you can join my Patreon, or you can subscribe, or you can buy, buy my games, or add The Night of the Inquisitor, my next game, to your wish list. So I'm going to leave all those links below. And thank you for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>